About 10,000 years ago, in Samaria, which is modern-day Saudi Arabia, the book begins its journey as a clay tablet. The Sumerians needed a way to keep record of crops and livestock, so they began making clay tablets to write on, with a simple form of writing that they invented called cuneiform. They used sticks to write on the tablets, and then they would leave them out in the sun to harden. However, there had to be a better way. Did you break another one? This better way came around 3500 BC in Egypt. The Egyptians had developed a more complex form of writing with pictures called hieroglyphics. They also invented a type of paper to write on. This first form of paper was made from a tall reed that grew along the Nile River, called a papyrus plant. Papyrus became the major industry for the Egyptians, and they began to export it. With this new business, Greece was their best customer. The Greeks began to make scrolls out of the papyrus. The scrolls were lightweight and easy to carry. Since Greece was the world capital of learning in those days, scrolls made it easier for scholars, teachers, and others to carry important information with them. The Greeks also invented a form of writing. It was an alphabet of 24 symbols called letters. Around 146 BC, the ever-growing Roman Empire conquered Greece. They too helped the book progress. They wrote on thin wooden boards, which they punched holes in and tied together. This wooden book became known as the Codex. In order to write in these new books, they applied wax to the wood, allowed time to let it dry, and then the writer would scratch the letters into the wax. These wooden books were soon replaced by ones that had papyrus pages, thus making them even easier to use and carry. Today, codex is the technical term for any book made up of multiple pages bound together. We can thank the Greeks for this new progress. Next, the use of parchment or stretched animal skin made the book even more like the ones we use today. The skins were bleached and rubbed smooth. There were many advantages to using parchment. It was less likely to tear, ink could be erased if needed, it could be painted, and you could use both sides of it. This form of the codex, with parchment, was the first version of the modern book. In regards to the book, the Chinese were writing on palm leaves that had been flattened. These flattened leaves were then fashioned together like a fan to be read. The Chinese wanted a better, more practical material, though, and they finally found it when in 105 AD the world's first sheets of real paper were invented. With this paper they made books that were written by hand. Eventually, they developed a printmaking method called woodcut, which made illustrating and making multiple impressions on the same page easier. Because of this new paper, the Chinese changed how they made books. They began to glue the pages together and fold them accordion style. During the Middle Ages, bookmaking occurred in small Christian communities called monasteries. Monks began to create handwritten copies or manuscripts of the works that had survived from Greece and Rome. They worked in rooms called scriptoria. Most of their copying was of the Bible and other religious material, and it was a very time-consuming process. Around 1100, monks began making illuminated manuscripts, very beautiful and colorful hand-copied books. However, the demand was growing for books, and the monks' slow process just could not keep up. Others began to make quick but not as attractive manuscripts to try to keep up with the demand for books. But it wasn't until around 1450, with the invention of printing with movable type, that things began to progress for the book. Johann Gutenberg invented the printing press in Mainz, Germany. Many copies of a book could be made now in the same time as one could be hand copied. By 1500, printing presses were in 300 European cities. This made books more available and affordable. For the first time in history, books were plentiful and ordinary people could now have access to books, and this spurred an intense desire for learning. All books printed before 1501 are called incunabula, meaning cradle, signifying the infancy of modern bookmaking. 
At this time in the book's history, most of them contained a title page, page numbers, table of contents, and index. In the 1800s, the first paperbacks were published. They were called dime paperbacks, and they were very popular. The book industry was booming. Modern books still resemble those books made hundreds of years ago. However, children's books have evolved and now include pop-up books, cloth and plastic books, and books that make noise. The newest type of books are e-books. These books can be read on the internet or downloaded to a special handheld device. Regardless of how they are read, the resiliency of the book has proved unbeatable, bouncing back again and again.